I believe most of us who are from application security must have had a chance to make use of nuclei templates in their testing activities. Uh, show of hands, how many of you are aware or have used nuclei? Oh, great number. So as we have also heard from some top bug bounty hunters, how they calibrate uh, these templates, right, to find some exclusive bugs on some wide range of targets. So our next speaker, who is also an AppSec researcher at Project Discovery, is going to expose you to, with his knowledge, how to write your first nuclei template. Put your hands together for Dhaneshwaran. Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Ahmedabad. Uh, good afternoon, Besides team. So today we are going to see about uh, how to write your first nuclear template. Uh, so a lit little bit introduction about my, my side. So I'm Dhanesh Varan. Uh, I'm working as an application security researcher in Project Discovery. So I mainly work on nuclear templates, contributions, and uh, creating new vulnerabilities, and new templates, and uh, research and development. So you can find me on uh, Twitter. So I go with the handle Dhyanesh TK. So previously, uh, I worked as a penetration tester. So uh, I started using Nuclear back in 2020. Uh, I saw a post from in Medium stating like uh, attack surface management. And then I got inspired from the work that they do and uh, the way uh, it automates the bugs and finds it at a larger scale and uh, got inspired by the team. So today's agenda, it's like introduction to the nuclear template and the power of the nuclear templates and writing web-based templates and a live demo. So let's start with the introduction. Uh, so how many of you have used nuclear templates in your day-to-day -day life? It seems like many, everyone, uh, all the bug bounty hunters who relies on automation, uh, even the top one, today's new uh, penetration testers, uh, the people who do DevSecOps, so they rely on uh, nuclear templates. So nuclear is basically uh, engine, and nuclear template is uh, uh, the template that we supply as an input, and it matches some validation, and then it produces some results. So it is written in a YAML-based file format, and it has an extension of .yaml. So YAML is nothing but it is like uh, you don't need a proper programming language to write it in. Like You just need a syntax for it, and then you will be able to uh, write a signature for a new vulnerability or an existing vulnerability or a pen test. So this is how nuclear template structure looks like. So here you can see uh, there is an ID. Uh, by default, uh, there are certain fields which is needed for a particular template if you are writing a template. So the basic fields are uh, ID and the info. So info contains the name, author, and the severity. So descriptions and remediations are like normally or considered to be an optional. You can add it if you're like going to generate report or uh, you use some markdown or you're going to integrate it with the uh, GitHub integration or Jira integration, basically. So the main here, it will be focused mostly on the web-based web templates that I will be showcasing. And uh, yeah, so the left side, it will be like a YAML template, and the right side, it contains a scan. So when you supply an input as a scan, it should have some URL schema. So we, basically, URL schema contains like uh, HTTP and uh, HTTPS. So we have a list of URLs in a file, and uh, you wanted to do a scale, large scale scanning for a single vulnerability that you wrote. And you are, you are go very bad at coding. And uh, you know the methodology, and the endpoint, and the response status code, and everything, and boom, magic, Like you can write a nuclear template for it. So basically, uh, what I've done is I've set up the Docker instance for this vulnerability. So this is my Docker. So it is uh, currently having a Jivo CD server. So currently, I'm going to uh, showcase that I know this particular endpoint. And uh, yep. so I know this endpoint. And uh, let, let, let me go to Bob. Sorry. Yep. So basically, uh, I know this Docker instance is vulnerable for this particular CVE, and I wanted to write a nuclear template for it. So this is this contains a particular request where uh, you have a path. So each, if you are uh, exploiting any CVE or a file path traversal, and uh, if it is a get based, you should you will always have a path in it. 
And then there is obviously a web request has a uh, web response. So here you can see a particular response, which is like a, which reads a etc slash password file. And it does do have, contains a status code. It's like 200 OK. So now I know the endpoint, and I know the status code. Now I know the matcher for it. So you, you don't need to like rely on writing Python code or Java code to scan, and uh, you don't even require a, a programming language to write a nuclear template. Basically, you just need a, a simple logic, and uh, that is to write a template. So I've written a template already. So here, basically, uh, the HTTP request, it nuclear supports multiple protocols. So one of the protocol is uh, HTTP, and it, like all the web requests it supports. And the other protocols are like DNS, TLS, and the networks, and etc. So here, the templates begins with request block. Basically, this is a web-based template, so it begins with request block. So the method, you have to specify it. So the method can be a get method. And the path of the vulnerability, I know like this is the path which is being present. So base URL is nothing but like the rule. Uh, yep. So the list of URLs which are considered to be a base URL. Uh, base URL. So you supply the base URL. So you supply the URLs which are like catted here, and this will be automatically taken by the nuclear and considered to be a base URL. And it will do a regex, and uh, it will match for this particular regex, and it will see the status code if it is present or not. So basically, if you don't know uh, uh, what like what is request, what is get, and what is path, what is base URL, so there is a specified uh, website for documentation that we have worked on, and this is the nuclear documentation documentation page, and there is a search bar. Uh, if you are like wanted to look into HTTP based templates and uh, unsafe templates raw or basic example of a HTTP template, just click on it. You will get a basic example of it without even knowing like. Uh, Without you, if you're like confused with the syntax or you don't know the syntax, you can like simply copy paste it and then rewrite the entire template on your own. Templating right and click on template details. So I specify like what are the infos which are basically needed. So the one is the ID, and the other one is uh, the information tab. So where it contains name, author, severity, medium, and description. So severity is needed, author is needed, name is needed. So one important thing is the ID should not contain a space. So this is done. It will be like easy for passing the output with the engine. So let's run and see like uh, how, let's run this template on the target and like let's see how it works. So nuclear, uh, I've already installed it. So what I'm going to do is like just to check if it's working properly or not. So I'm going to save this file in uh, YAML. So I'm going to use YAML. So I've already saved it. So I'm just closing it. And I've named the file as test.yaml, so nuclear-u, and uh, it, the Docker is running on port 8153. So it's run on 00. So I will specify the URL schema here. So HTTP dot colon double slash 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0. And then you can copy the port. Yep. So then we have to specify the template file name hyphen t and dot yaml. Yep. Yep. So let's see. Yep. So you can see it is detected yet. So if you don't know like what happens in back on back end of the nuclear, you can always use a flag called debug. So it will showcase like how the request went to the web server and how the web server is responding, which, which status code has been matched. So it is always good to have a multiple matches in a template. So basically, uh, how not to write to a template is like just remove this, and even it will detect, and it will be like a false positive. We wrote this for a CV and. It will detect, but it will be a false positive. Like because if you run it against an example.com or a application which always throws a zero one uh, status code as 200, it will be a false positive. So it's good that you contain a multiple matcher. So I have added two matcher, minimum like two. Uh, you can have like three matcher. Uh, since I know that the response header is uh, content type is not mentioned here. So the content type is mentioned is like application plus uh, O stream. So we can mention that too. So this is one way to add an additional matcher. So there will be three matchers. So there will be zero false positive in results. Yep. So this is the basic 
template that I have wrote for a vulnerability. Uh, if you wanted to scan it on your bug bounty targets, uh, this CV is already there in Nuclear. So what you can do is, instead of mentioning the file name, you can just type Nuclear hyphen U. Instead of putting the file name, since it is present, you can specify the ID. So this is why uh, I specify the ID. And this is already in the public repository, and it's been pushed already. So it will take the template from the community uh, contribution, which are public out there. So if you're confused and you wrote a template and you don't know, like, uh, is it correctly written or is it throwing some error or is it working or not, you can always do a validation of the template. Nuclear hyphen T uh, test.yaml and then hyphen validate. So this will basically validate the template and check uh, all the checks are there or not. So what we will do, uh, here it shows all the templates are validated. So how it will look if there is something missing in it. So what I will do, I will remove a colon from here. And then we'll save this and see if it throws an error. OK. You can see it clearly shows that uh, the line 18 mapping variable is not allowed in the context because this is not in a part of a syntax. So. If you are struggling with some error, uh, feel free to join our Discord server or reach out to any of the people from the PD team. They will help you out. It. It's better to always use uh, validate it before pushing to the public template. So this is how you can validate the template yourself before pushing it or run it, running it at a scale. Yep. So let's move to the next slide. Yep, so I have already explained the concept of uh, nuclear template is YAML based and uh, human readable and easy to uh, write and code. And that's it. So the power of nuclear templates basically, uh, the, it is totally community driven. And uh, there are like 500 plus contributors from different, uh, different parts of the country, different parts of the world. It can be exploited in, like testing a single vulnerability at a larger scale and uh, writing a own custom template for your own needs and supports DLS, HTTP, and uh, web sockets, and headless. So I will show you a, a real-time scenario which I encountered two years back when I started writing a template. So testing a single vulnerability at large scale and writing custom nuclear templates for your own need. So back in 2020, uh, I was uh, doing a pen test in a company. I hope it's visible. So this is an uh, this is a vulnerability of a out of bound lock method XXE. Uh, it was found in a risk management portal. This is an unauthenticated uh, vulnerability, and uh, you can see it is a lock method. But most of the people doesn't test for a lock method, and we know already like lock method uh, accepts XML data in the uh, in the body. So what I did is like after spending a uh, one week of time. Uh, we ended up in a zero day in a product, and uh, I just have around like one day to scan around like thousands of domains, and uh, I have to cross check it at a without like not to report false positive. And after uh, I thought like I have not much coded into it, so I thought okay, let's try to write a nuclear template. So what I did is I wrote a nuclear template for it. And uh, it contained a matcher for two matcher at the initial stage. Uh, it was not a regex. You can write it for regex as well. And it contained status code 500. And I know like it had a root. And uh, the, we were trying to read a etc slash password. So after running it, uh, we found 36 XXE uh, on their customer clients. And uh, they fixed it within a week. And they were like super happy like it was found and not been exploited or not been abused. So the, it is the criticality, like having your custom templates and uh, making use of it. And this is how it is done. If you are like using the public templates, and you will be end up in duplicates. But if you are going to monitor the assert and then run nuclear on it, then you will can make some bounties or like you can make some good hits. So this is one of the scenario exploiting a vulnerability at a larger scale. So supports different protocol, TLS, HTTP, DNS, and WebSocket. So if you go to the template guide, you can see uh, HTTP is there. And uh, HTTP, there are like different methods of HTTP is there, headless network. So most of the uh, templates that we have received are like around like 
70 percentage of templates which are from the public repo are like web-based templates and we are planning to increase on the network level templates, source code scanning, API, API scanning and token spraying and headless templates. So uh, if you're like more interested to do some re research on network-based templates and uh, you're doing infrastructure pen testing and network pen testing, you can always uh, have a look at it. And there is a fingerprint scanner which, which, which we have released. Uh, if you're like, interested in uh, doing some research on network-based template, you can have a look at that. So the next one. Yeah, so this is the statistics of the community power templates which are there. So basically you can clearly see there are like, totally there are like 4,023 templates right now uh, in the last release. So out of them like 583 uh, were pushed from uh, project history. And then like community driven templates are like 3,440. It's a huge number and like totally uh, community driven in it. Basically we get inputs from the community and like try to enhance the engine and then try to uh, support as many test cases. And uh, this is one of the test cases, like you can do race condition using nuclear, uh, the stuff that you do in verb suit, like battering, uh, the sniper attack and password spraying and other stuff. So this is something like uh, the feedback that we come, uh, get from the community and then try to implement it. So it's totally like community power templates. So next slide. Yep, so if anyone here the, from the contributors like this, this is specifically for you, like uh, there are like 500 contributors so far uh, within a spam of two years since the project started. So thanks to all the people who have contributed to the uh, template repository and other repositories of project discovery and we are looking forward for the more contribution in the future. So how it works, uh, so I have explained HTTP starts with a HTTP request block and then the matcher block, I have already explained it. And there are like different matches uh, apart from the word matches. So you can use regex and DSL. DSL is nothing but like a data structure language, which, which is something uh, which supports multiple uh, different kinds of matcher in the response. And it supports binary too. So this is the basic template. Uh, this was a scenario actually which inspired me to start writing a template. So I was uh, reading a blog on Docker and it contained a repos it contained a image just less than uh, JSON endpoint exposed. So what I thought was like, this is the vulnerable endpoint and uh, the responses of JSON obviously. So response it's contained uh, the following variables like parent ID, container and label. So this was unique actually. So I was doing in a red teaming project, so we have to scan around like 2,000, 3,000 domains and without getting detected. So what we did is uh, we wrote a template for this and uh, we used the proxy to rotate the IPs on each request. So the IPs would be getting changed without being detected and uh, we found some exposed uh, Docker and then we were trying to exploit it. So these are some of the real life scenarios uh, that nuclear can help and nuclear templates can be like written. Writing raw templates with regex matches. This is interesting, right? So you might have know the left side screen is from the repeater tab. And uh, when you do some post authentication or uh, when you're trying to do some uh, multiple chained exploits, like which contains an upload functionality, and then after shell upload, you want to see the shell file. Or uh, like it's basically like a raw request which you see in the box it can be converted into a template. So if you're like struggling to create a template for raw, you can always uh, rely on Burpsuit plugin for nuclear. So it is very handy and you can try to, I will show you in the last slide. So this is just a basic example uh, with the regex. So this is how a raw request looks and uh, the response we are trying to uh, read the etc slash password. Next, this is something interesting. Extractors. So uh, let's consider an example like you found a Google Map API key in a URL and, uh, and you wanted to write a template. So you wanted to extract the uh, API key and show it in the nuclear output. So extractors can be like used to print the output as well and it can be changed to use it to rewrite it in a dynamic extractor. So this is normal extractor. It will be, if you're not using internal true, it will always try to print it out. 
So there are other test cases like out of bound testing with uh, interact as such placeholder. So recently, like when log4j came, uh, I think literally interact as such was like many people were using nuclear to exploit log4j. And we have a pretty good, uh, good recent log4j templates on nuclear, like no other scanner has. We have around like 15 different products for log4j, specifically for uh, out of bound testing. Yep. So this is a sample testing. Uh, this is for Metabase log4j. So here you can see uh, the interface SSH URL has been pl It's a placeholder, basically. It generates a dynamic URL similar to the Burp Collaborator for testing out of band requests. So it supports both the protocol, a DNS hit. If you get a DNS hit in Burp Collaborator, and uh, you cannot keep the Burp Collaborator for a longer time if you're like doing some out of band testing. You don't know like when you will get the hit back. So it's better like you have host your own interact server or a own server and you can use it here. So you, here you can see uh, it prints out, uh, it uses regex and uh, the part of the interest and requests, it will try to print out the OS name in the response. So you can basically uh, see it is, it has printed out uh, Linux here. This is the operating system of this target. So this is how Interact SSH has been used. So if you are doing some out of band testing, you can try Interact SSH in the template. Yep. Dynamic extractor. Yep. So recently, uh, I was writing a CV for an Atlassian vulnerability where we used the dynamic extractors to gather the endpoints from the first request and try to use it on the second request. So I will showcase in the last. It's a demo. So writing an authenticating template with DSL matches. So many people will, were thinking like it's an unauthenticated scanner basically, for only for web. But it's, it also supports uh, authenticated templates. So basically, uh, if you can see uh, in the public repository, we have specifically mentioned authenticated tags so that uh, if the user specifies the, if you want to run a, a template based on authenticated templates, so nuclear hyphen L, let me put, uh, let's use example.com. And uh, hyphen tags, authenticated hyphen V. OK, wait, wait, wait. I think it should load. So you can see uh, some of the authenticated templates has been loaded. So you should get a question like why the variable names have been not specified. So authenticated templates like used to have a username and password. So you can specify uh, the variable names in the CLI so that it will do the authentication for you and it will try to exploit the vulnerability for you. Hyphen where you can specify the username. Uh, let's put PD team and then hyphen where password. So for the time being, uh, I will load a template which is authenticated. So CVE 2022 1937. So what I will do uh, to show you what is happening in the background, uh, I will use proxy. 127.0.0.1. And then so it basically routes the traffic to Burp so that I can show you that uh, username's uh, password has been supplied and how the template is making a request. So it will not do the detection part, but you know that it supports uh, authenticated templates. OK, no valid templates found. 1937. Okay, I've used, uh, I should use ID, not T. So, yep, this is correct. Yep, let's check through the box of history. Yep, so here you can see, uh, I hope it is visible. So, here you the it is a WordPress login template, uh, authenticated template. So it hits the WP login page and supplies the username and password. And it will check, it will do, if it is, po if it is successful, uh, since it shows like 404 not found, it's not a WordPress instance. So 
this is how to run an authenticated template if you are having a if you had some got some credential of a wordpress instance and you wanted to check what are the plugins it might have and you wanted to do post exploitation of it you can rely on the authenticated tags and you can specify uh, the other tags as well yep so this is how the main interesting part is here to notice it it uses cookie reuse basically uh, this is a particular syntax it it act as a it act as a browser based session and uh, when we try to log in into a, a login portal or a wordpress instance the cookie used to be created so it try to pass the cookie in the ne next request and then try to see if it is authenticated or not so yep yeah this is an another example scenario uh, this is ptc ram tweet like stating that uh, there is a vulnerability for a poc it's been released and uh, it just took me 2 minutes or 1 minute less than to write a template and push it to the public repository because it, nuclea is totally relying on the res request response and strict matcher and then boom you can get a nuclea template so in the left side you can see we have the request and we know what is the endpoint and we have the response we have the matcher so likewise like if you are like struggling uh, you can use burp suit plugin to create a template if you do if you are like more beginner you can always go with the documentation part yep so i wrote this template so there is an another interesting part uh, when you have multiple endpoint you can always use a flag called uh, the syntax called stop at first match so there are like two endpoints in this slide so when it matches for the first endpoint and it doesn't if it is matched uh, it won't try to run the uh, execute the second endpoint so that the request get reduced yep so you can run it on a bug bounty target to check it so very fast so yeah so, so this is the recent zero, uh, vulnerability which was uh, discovered by grandview uh, it was a cve for atlassian and it was a command injection vulnerability and uh, the poc was out by test null and we were looking at the poc we found that we have the request but the one of the interesting fact we encountered was like the project name and the repository name can be different actually so what we did is uh, we used extractor to extract the project names from the first request and then we used uh, internal true to dynamic extractor to use it, reuse it in the next request and we already know uh, it contains a response body uid and it within the bracket it contained the what is the name of it and we know the uh, response content type is like application slash json and there is one more exception error which was common at least in bitbucket so what we did is uh, yep let me show you i have set up a vulnerable instance for it Yep. So this is running on Docker, basically on port uh, 990. So this is the first request. Uh, so here you can see there are like multiple uh, slang name. It's called demo, and uh, there is an another slang name, uh, project discovery. There is another uh, slang name called test. So before uh, digging deep into the uh, endpoints, I will show you how how this Bitbucket looks and why it is like vulnerable. let's open it in igneto so if a big bucket has a project which is like public it will have this endpoint called projects like if the company is willing to showcase the repository is like public and uh, they can basically uh, log if you are like having an administrator access you can basically log in and i will show you that too yo projects so this is already authenticated and uh, you can see that this demo project is not public but the project discovery and test projects are like public so in this endpoint uh, okay okay yep so here only like two of the things were shown but when we hit the endpoint there were like three projects like demo project discovery and test so the challenge here is to, you have to enumerate all the project names and then do an iteration and then check uh, which which in which place the vulnerability occurs so we have to write a complex template for it 
So what we did is uh, we wrote a template for it. So first request, uh, this is the first request which contains the repository uh, details which are public and which are like which are mentioned there. And this is the second request. So I have installed a nuclear burp plugin already. So if you are like not aware, uh, nuclear to have a burp plugin. If you are using a paid version, uh, just go to burp sort, refresh the list. You should be able to see it. And uh, if you are using a community edition, uh, just go to burp sort. Uh, go to our project discovery repository and then search for burp sort plugin, and then you will be able to see a jar file there. Just load the jar file from the extender tab, and then you will be able to ha see it over here. Yep. Let's go to the proxy tab. So this is the first request called repos, and this is the second request. So there are like two requests involved in this request. So burp suit nuclear plugin, what is it like? Just uh, select the first request and the second request, and right click it, go to the extension, uh, click on generate template. That's it. So it basically sends to, uh, it makes a unsafe request, like a raw request, and then, uh, OK. So it doesn't have a matcher yet. So if you are like trying to have a matcher for this, you can uh, type it manually, or else like, I will show you how, how the matcher has been made. So this is the first template that I show. Since I have sel if you have the response, and you can select the response and create a matcher for it. So what I will do, I will go to proxy. So I know this matcher exception is there. So I will select it. Click on extension and add matcher to the sixth tab. So if you go to the sixth tab, so we have one matcher. So the like ways like we should add multiple matcher for it. Since it's a complicated template, uh, I will I will just showcase the template like how it has been made. So basically, we extract uh, we used. Uh, we copied this entire JSON response in a TXT file. So this is the JSON response for the first request. So we are going to use JQ to uh, basically extract the key values and the slang values. Yep. So this is the command for it. I'm just going to. OK, single code is missing. Mm. OK, let's try it. OK, so we have extracted the slang value. So similarly, we have to extract the key value for it. And we can use JQ. And it will. we will include one more. Uh, flag in it, which is called iteration all, which will do the iteration, and we will be able to uh, try each repository on the each request. So if it, is, uh, if it hits on the first demo, rec uh, demo request, we should also make sure that it doesn't try the other ones. So since demo is not public, so we will be trying project discovery and test. So this is how the entire template would look like. So here, we are using extractor, and the type of the extractor is JSON. So we should use internal true so that uh, it doesn't print and it passes the request to the next URL. And then stop at first match, basically, we, we have three, three, three different types of slugs and keys. So it will just check one. And if it is matched for the first one, boom, like it will not uh, check for the other ones. And the status code, we know like it's, it is having status code 500. And this particular keyword is there. So we will save this template. So we have the target here. Yep. So you can see it has printed out the uh, bit bucket. So there is a rejects. It has been written. Uh, and group one has been used, which prints the uh, host name of it. So that's it. So this is how we wrote a complex template for a new vulnerability. So here we identify that uh, if you want, if there is some, there is one case I have missed it. So we have used a variable called data. So rand base five means like it automatically generates five random uh, alphabets 
and it can be of anything. So I can show you by doing the debug. Yep. So you, here you can see uh, like there is a five uh, alphabets and numeric characters of five digit. Uh, if you wanted to specify like a like normally like test and it will be like detected by web, so it is good to have a random string which has been generated. And it has taken the test repository because uh, we know that there is a repository called demo, which is not public, but it is kept in as a private. So it took the public repository from here. And it did a exploitation. And we, we were able to identify that this vulnerability been, like, can be like, exploited at the scale. Yeah. So next is burp, so nuclear burp plugin. So there are like certain things. Uh, you can see there is a tab over here. Uh, like, have you anyone like have used burp suit plugin for uh, nuclear specifically? Yeah. Yep. So there is there is a CV ID. Uh, let's take there is no CV ID for it. Uh, let me put CV ID two thousand. 22, 1, 2, 3, 4, just random CV ID. And I wanted to put the description, reference link, and other details into the template. So what I can do is right click on it, go to add or classification, CV, and uh, specify the CV like 2022 and uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and click on OK. So what it does is it does a, it make an API call, and it populates all the details for you, which is very easy. So this is one of the trick. And uh, you can click on this particular dialog box and uh, press uh, Command R, and it will have a drop-down menu. Uh, it helps to like uh, tell you what are the help options available in the nuclear burp suit plugin. Yep. So that uh, it basically acts as a CLI. If I, if I do ID, it will say uh, what is my username in the system. And it is best a CLI, but it has been integrated with the plugin. There are many cool features in it. Yep. Cool. This is some of the interesting facts of plugin. Yeah. Yeah, these are the reference. Uh, feel free to check it out. Uh, how to write templates if you have any confusions. We, uh, you can have take a look at these reference links. And finally, uh, we do have a reel for the uh, video for this year. Uh, this is 2020 project discovery. Let's play it. My favorite open source crew at Project Discovery is going full time. It, it's so cool. They, they just secured $1.7 million in funding uh, to take their tooling to the next level. So everyone that's involved in that, congratulations. But today I will convince you that this tool is amazing. And obviously I am talking about Nuclei. I love this vulnerability scanner. And speaking of automation, the heroes of automation and the ones that kind of changed the game with all that is Project Discovery again <laughs> um, when they created uh, Nuclei. I realized that this could be extremely powerful. This could be extremely powerful. And I think Sharad also realized it in his own way. It allows us to freely do whatever we need to do. So we create our templates, or we feed Nuclei templates, we feed Nuclei these targets, and it will go and run and do your scans. So there's Nuclei from Project Discovery. Um, I think everybody has heard about that. With Nuclei, what I love about it is all of this is standardized with the YAML templates. And so now our team can respond to vulnerabilities by all speaking the same language. Yesterday, the the new struts vulnerability came out right in uh, building a template for that vulnerability just to check for the path that it could be present on is like six lines in yaml right it's it's amazing yeah. it's super easy to build your own scans então vamos lá primeiro todo template do play né para tu poder automatizar uma tarefa cada template automatiza uma tarefa praticamente né this changed the game right when this tool was released because suddenly everyone had pretty decent automation and vulnerability scanning capabilities just with this tool full of thousands of subdomains and tens and hundreds of thousands of endpoints and JavaScript files and parameters and what have you. Um, and I don't really know what to do with them all. You run yep. nuclei templates all over them. <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> it has, uh, you know, 1,000 plus CVE checks, uh, 100 plus informational detections that give you know, information about different technologies, uh, over 500 admin panel checkers, 
and uh, you know, a total of over 3,000 total templates that give you security information about a site. This is a really, really, really awesome project. I love Nuclei, and I'm glad that Project Discovery is really putting a lot of work behind it. Proof of concept, ou preuve de vulnérabilité, et en fait, c'est tout simplement une sorte de workflow, euh, étape par étape, de comment exploiter une vulnérabilité. Tout ça, on va pouvoir l'automatiser et créer des tests avec cette fameuse méthode de vulnerability as code. Et bien là, aujourd'hui, euh, c'est ce qu'on va voir avec Nuclei. One of the interesting things about this tool is they claim that by using the template system that they provide, this leads to zero false positives. And one of the really cool things about this is over 100 security researchers and engineers have put forth different templates that can then be used when you download Nuclei and start using it as a vulnerability scanner. Okay, so this step click I have put it in the replacement. I don't need to operate it. It will operate it automatically. I can scan it easily. So this is our AI. How do you make sure that that vulnerability never ever occurs in your product again? Well, write a Nuclei tem template for it. Integrate that in your CI CD. Yeah, I mean, Project Discovery is one of those teams that just as soon as they find a piece of the tool chain that needs to be solved better, they'll just immediately mm. write it. Like a lot of their tools end up being the, the ones that you, you check out, right? Seems like I'm fanboying on product discovery lately, but hey, maybe I am. Maybe that's what, maybe that's what I'm doing. Is this, the, is this the project discovery stream? Who knows? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yep, feel free to join our Discord server. You can just simply scan the QR code and you'll be in. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dianeshwar. Thank you for explaining all of this as simple as you can.